the gender revolution and ideology is a continuation of the sexual revolution, a next step. It happened in the West and countries, uh, and the East European countries under communist dictatorship were in a way protected of that 68 revolution. The student rebellion of 1968, it was all communist theory which was put into practice. They were intelligent people. They realized that the old Marxist theory of revolutionizing the proletariat, the proletarians, did not work anymore. So they turned to the minorities as the revolutionary subject, as it is said in, in uh, communist theory. And they understood clearly, we have to get to the levers of power. And they proclaimed the march through the institutions to the very top. They work with very long strategies, they work with the global network, and they work with very, very sophisticated methods of manip manipulation of the mind. The abuse of language is central for that. Words which have a high sound in our ears, freedom. The subtitle of my book is Destruction of Freedom in the Name of Freedom. Human rights, a very high value, which was formulated in the Universal Declaration of Human Rights in 1948. Human rights belong to every single human being always and everywhere. Human rights are not privileges of minorities. So this is how the strategy worked. And with very, very intelligent, long-term strategies getting to the levers of power in all areas of society. The beginning was, the breakthrough of the sexual revolution was the student rebellion of 1968. It had three elements, communist ideologies, ideologisierung, uh, radical feminism, and so-called sexual liberation. The idea is, have sex with anybody you want, as much as you want, search for your satisfaction and that will bring you liberation. And already in the 1970s, this went, was an attack on the children. They started sexual education in the schools. It went on and on, and in 1990, a book appeared by an American professor, Judith Butler. The title of her book is Gender Trouble, Feminism and the Subversion of Identity. So you have it in the title. The idea of gender is to destroy the identity of man and woman as man and woman. And that, of course, is in the interest of the LGBT lobby. Only five years later, there was the U United Nations World Women Congress in Beijing, 1995. It was in the hands of radical feminists, which are all lesbians. And they understood they need a new term to destroy the binary system of male and female in our society, and that term is gender. The gender theory says there's biological sex and there's social sex. Biological sense is ascribed to you at birth. Somebody says you are a girl, your true identity is what you say you are, that is your social sex, that is your gender. And with very manipulative methods, they managed to introduce that term gender into the official document of that UN conference. And since then, there is a path of triumph of that ideology in all areas of society. It dominates the academia, in, in the West at least, in a totalitarian sense. Students must accept that idea, otherwise they are expelled from university. Of course it is a lie to say there is not man and woman. And every one of us knows we are either a man or a woman. So the, an ideology which is built on a lie, an anthropological lie, who the human being is, must become totalitarian. Because it is against nature, it is against reason, it is against our own perception of who we are, and of course it is the deepest rebellion against God we can possibly imagine. We read on the first page of the Bible, God created man as man and woman in his own image. And now we say, we create ourselves in our own image. And we have this absolute madness of suggesting to children, beginning in kindergarten, that they can choose what sex they want to have. They get children books where the prince marries the prince, or children books where you see a face you don't, of a child, you don't know, is it a boy or a girl, and a fairy comes down and says, only you know what you really are.
This is a criminal abuse of children for an ideology, in my mind. I can only see that the elites of this world, the elites of money and power, are united in that strategy. And what I mean with elites of money and power are the United Nations, the European Union, mainstream media are Thank supporting so-called same-sex marriage, um, the big billionaire foundations, private people who have the power over billions and billions and billions of dollars, like George Soros with his open society, Rockefeller, Bill Gates of course, and others, they are all on that line. Non-government organizations, the most powerful is International Planned Parenthood Federation. They are the abortion undertakers of this world and they are financed by governments. All of them seem to have one aim and that is to reduce population. If you destroy family, if you sexualize children, if you promote homosexuality, all that leads to a decrease of fertility. The birth rate of Bulgaria is 1.3, women per, uh, children per woman. In Germany, it's insignificantly higher. That is a suicidal course. If we solve that, in quotation marks, by migration of people from a completely different culture with a completely different religion, we destroy our culture. The war is against Christianity. Christians are censored, criminalized, taken to court, fined, even going, taken, being taken to jail accused of discrimination, accused of hate speech. If we say what is the Bible says, if we just quote the Bible, this is considered hate speech. So who is discriminated in our time are the Christians. And the human rights of free speech, which is an absolutely necessary human right of democracy, is turned against Christians. So I look at what is happening through this movement, and that is the destruction of the family. If you destroy what gives identity to a person, which is nation, I am German, I am a Catholic, I am a woman, uh, then, and, and I know which family I come from, if you destroy all that, you make a person very weak. We can bear poverty to a degree, we cannot bear the breakdown of family. It is the source of our strength. Mm -hmm. The men who came on horses of, of, of the Ottoman uh, kingdom, they stole the children from the Christians, forced the Christian families to give away a certain uh, percentage of their children. They brainwashed them, they forced them to convert to, to Islam. They trained them as soldiers and used them in the, against the Christian. Something similar is happening. They're stealing the children from their parents by sexualizing them. A sexualized child cannot be educated anymore by their parents. It will not listen to the parents anymore. They have their smartphones, they go into their, th that area, and the parents have no possibility anymore to, to give them their values and a good education and make them good people. All they're interested is in consumerism and sexuality. And it is dangerous what will happen to our democracy, because everybody will grow up and have a vote. So where will democracy go if we have Masses of people without identity. There are two documents you can find in the internet. Uh, one is Standards for Sexuality Education in Europe. They have a program and, and they appropriate to each age group. And the first age group from zero to four is to be introduced to masturbation. So it all works on the anthropological basis that a child has a right to sexuality. There's a second document, International Technical Guidance for Sexuality Education. The word technical is, in, is put in there so that we think it's just methods, it's, it's not values. It is the, uh, issued by the UNESCO, the, the whole block of the United Nations agencies, and it aims at the youth of this world to implant gender ideology in the hearts of small children from five to 18. That means have sex at any age, accept any kind of sexual orientation, L, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual. Pregnancy only appears in the context of sexual transmitted disease. If you contracept, you will be able to avoid sexual transmitted diseases and pregnancy. It's on the same level. And you can see that the United Nations want to push the youth of this world into contraception and abortion.
and LGBT ideology. This is not conspiracy theory. This is black and white. You can get it in the internet. I just look at the facts. I mean, I'm not, I'm not into conspiracy theory, but I can prove what I've said, that all these elites are behind the agenda. There's nothing about conspiracy, it's open uh, in daylight. If you destabilize the identity of a person, of course you can change, do anything with the sexuality. And the destabilization of identity is intended by sexual pedagogics in kindergarten. We human beings are not animals governed by instinct, we are free. We can satisfy our sexual drive in many ways. So if you separate sexuality from procreation, you can do anything with your sexual, uh, with your sexual drive if it's only to satisfy your body. And this international lobby knows what they are doing with children. They destabilize their identity, they sexualize them, they say every kind of sexual orientation is of the same value. They destroy the vision of love, marriage and family. They create very deep wounds in the heart of the, of the young people. Of course they can turn them around. In the last three years we have a curve like this of cases of, trans, of children who say our mind is in the wrong body and we want to change our body. The problem is uh, that this ideology is only working in one way. Uh, that is, gender says there's gender fluidity, you, you can choose the sex you want to have, the gender, yeah? But only from heterosexuality to homosexuality, transsexuality. Now our health minister, who is a homosexual, is prepares a law that forbids, by law, therapy for homosexuals. The new thing about our time is that the people in power know and have the, the technical means of manipulating the mass consciousness of people together with the media. So we see we, in films and advertisement everywhere, everywhere, we hear homosexuality is fine. We see this wonderful couple of two men and oh, aren't, isn't the love beautiful they have to each other, yeah? Behind this is a strategy. What is new in our time are the very sophisticated methods of manipulation of mass consciousness. There's hardly any film we see without a homosexual couple uh, which you say, oh, aren't they nice people and aren't they in love with each other? So the public awareness changes and you do not have a loud voice of the churches because everybody's afraid, because the, uh, the lobby is violent. They will throw you out of your job, they will take you to, to court, and so on and so on. But I want to state something very clearly. What I say is not against homosexual persons. They are children of God, and I wish them the very best. But I believe in a universe with a God who is love and life. And I think we should educate our children and ourselves to fulfill that longing by finding the complementary partner in the other sex. And children need that basis of parents who say that yes and who are, bond, who are bonded together for life. And we are called to realize that as best we can. An awakening is happening in many countries. New parties, new governments, social movements. This is the stage we are at. And either we go into that or we will lose it. I'm researching into this for since the beginning of 2000. And all the time something happens which I thought was not possible. So do not expect that it will just stop. There is no way of stopping it unless we rise against it. And I wish Bulgaria every, every luck and every blessing. It is not just for Bulgaria, it is for the whole European Union. Real pictures.